Hey guys, uh, Dave here with uh, something uh, really cool. I've known that this has been coming. And you guys might wonder why you're looking at a ad for cakesafe.com. Uh, how does that fall into the modeling category? Has he decided to start doing cakes? No. Um, I actually saw a advertisement on uh, a really cool product that piqued my interest on one, how it worked, and how efficient it was. And uh, I contacted the company, and the owner is a really great guy. Uh, actually, he and his wife, and they own cakesafe.com. Um, now, they're actually known for creating cases for transporting um, some large cakes, such as wedding cakes, things like that. They've actually been featured on uh, Food Network um, and a couple of shows on there, or at least their products have been. So, um, after some discussion, uh, the owner was nice enough to send me a, uh, a demo of their product. And hopefully I will be doing uh, something here shortly to show you. But let me back up and let you see. This is actually, and uh, it's kind of big, but this is actually a spray booth. Um, this really, really piqued my interest, especially when you're um, conserving space. And... Um, you know, and I was really curious on how it ended up working because most most of the spray booths you end up seeing um, are they draw straight back. Now um, this is their flyer. Um, you know, make sure go over, say hi, tell them that you know you saw the ad um, or their their products on my page. Um, you know, let them know, but um, they actually do make regular. Um, you know, back panel spray booths. And um, they actually have, it's a really cool feature. Um, they're modular. So you can start out with a small one. And then as your projects get bigger or you get more money, you can upgrade. Um, you can even do uh, larger ones. And I actually saw a photo of the 36 inch uh, one and you could easily build a perfect grade uh, Gundam standing straight up or a full one uh, quarter scale figure standing straight up all together um, and that's something that you don't really you can't really do with a lot of um, the regular spray booths that are out um, now here are some statistics on uh, the unit itself and uh, I apologize um, if everything's a little shaky I'm trying not to be um, so anyway this is presented by cakesafe.com um, it features a 9 by 2 working area, um, which is this area here. It's low profile, so it's only 3 inches tall. Um, so it's really convenient. You could actually leave this on your desk, um, you know, push it back. Um, it's got a great uh, tabletop area up here. So you could do such as putting something like that on there or your parts um, as you have them drying. You could have them up there. Um, just curing. Uh, the full measurements of it is it's uh, 16 and a half inches deep by 20 inches wide. Uh, it's powered by one motor uh, which produces 240 uh, CFM, that's cubic feet per minute. Um, and it's it actually puts out more air than um, my big spray booth um, that I made, uh, which I'm really impressed with. It only uses 42 watts of power, which is actually really low. Um, it comes with three me media filters. Um, I count this as, uh, at least in our hobby, as a media filter. Um, and it is uh, one black course, which of course is this one, um, and one Merv 8 um, filter, which is this one. And I'll actually pop them out here in a minute and show you the inside and uh, the filters themselves and how they go in. Um, but the Merv 8 is a mechanical, not electrical, uh, statical. Um, it has low resistance to airflow. So that's it's not going to cut down on 
your airflow. A lot of the spray booths that I have messed with, um, they actually, um, once you put filters in to try and pull out particles and stuff, uh, it actually cuts cuts down a lot of the airflow. Um, underneath that is a Merv 13, um, which I'm really impressed with something like, like this. Though if you're doing cakes and things like that, it, it's very practical because you don't want um, any mold, any anything building up on inside the unit. So that part, it, it completely makes sense. Um, with the Merv 13, um, it's uh, virtually a hundred percent efficient in removing uh, particles down to a one micron. Um, so it can actually remove particles as small as mold and bacteria, uh, which is really great. Um, technically, if you wanted, you could have this running, you know, as an air filter in your hobby room uh, for those uh, those of us that have uh, some breathing problems, especially when working with resin. I'm going to get to that portion a little bit later. It only weighs 13 and a half pounds. Um, so that makes it really easy if you don't have a lot of space to store it in um, to move it around. You can store it on its side. You can store it in the closet. Um, if you're like me and maybe you go to a show or something like that and you set up a, a, a small table and you're doing something on it, you could use it for use it for that. Um, something I'm kind of curious about, though I would, um, you know, uh, change, change this to something a little bit finer is like with me, I work with a lot of resin, um, and it, it gets everywhere, I swear. Um, and this would come in really handy for, um, the resin dust, uh, but like I said, uh, a, a finer material, um, even like a cloth material. So you could be working over this area with it on, and it would actually draw the du uh, the resin dust, the particles, uh, everything else to it, um, instead of it just going flying everywhere. And with it being the low profile and the bottom um, bottom filters and everything, this just makes it so much easier. Um, I actually do use my paint booth once in a while when I'm doing a lot of grinding or a lot of sanding and uh, to keep the debris from flying everywhere. Um, but this will actually work a lot better. So hold on one second and I will be right back. Um, I need to pull this panel off. Uh, that way I can pull out the filters and show you guys. Okay guys, so back again. I've gotten the screws loose for the lip that holds in the filters. Um, one of the things that I really noticed was on the Kodo Ale is there is a, a good amount of dust, uh, resin dust, that is on it. Um, you know, I was saying earlier how it gets everywhere, and I think that this would be great for people that work on, work on that to help keep it down. And that just that just proof because I actually keep um, keep her probably a good fifteen feet away from where I ever end up doing any grinding and and uh, heavy heavy duty sanding stuff like that on my uh, resin. And as you can see, that's probably uh, three maybe four months worth. Uh, yes, I'm not the greatest person about going along and keeping all my figures and stuff dusted. Technically, I probably should come through here about every six months with a leaf blower just to keep it all down. Um, I would never be able to work on anything if I just concentrated on uh, keeping everything clean. So, uh, back to this. With uh, the screws loose, you remove this lip. You've got the top uh, media panel on here. You just pull that off. slide out your first filter, which is your Merv 8. This is for removing all the larger particles and everything. Uh, once it gets pretty clogged, depending on, on what you're doing, uh, you can come by with a, a vacuum and remove uh, all the dust particles or take it outside and blow it out. So you've got that one. Underneath it is your Merv 13, uh, super fine particles. 
on here. Same thing, but most of what's going to end up getting on here is the last of the residue uh, from your paint, uh, from your overspray and everything. Now, as it is with, with this booth right now, uh, it's recommended only for doing on acrylics, water-based, things like that. Uh, because if you're doing acrylics, you really need to vent this outside. And uh, talking to the owner, Scott, he's actually in process of designing one that has a uh, an outlet where you could vent it outside. Uh, I don't know if he's uh, changing the, the motor. Personally, myself, uh, because I did kick it on and was messing around with it before I showed you guys. Um, I don't think it really needs it. The motor seems pretty strong as it is, so I don't know if it really needs a stronger one. Um, but, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he comes up with for the um, for the one that you can do, like lacquers and, and heavy heavier duty, especially heavy fumed um, paints. So once you get the filters out, um, you've actually got this rubber gasket that's in here. Um, to seal in uh, the filters. Um, your air comes in and gets sucked through the back up in here. And there is a chamber in here. So it's going to swirl it in and then out. Um, so we'll replace back in the filters. And with the rubber gasket, it is kind of a tight fit, but you do want one that's in there. Um, replacement filters you can actually get from um, CakeSafe. They actually have them that you can purchase. Um, though, you know, I, I'll really have to test this out and try it out to see how long, but a filter should last um, quite a while on this. Uh, I think on my big one, I only have to replace it like if I'm really heavy duty painting like once a year maybe uh, even then I don't even really have to do that uh, I just do it because it's dirty um, but on it I've got regular standard um, like filters that you can go to Home Depot and get on there now one of the things that I, that I did notice on here is if you're working with something heavy you might uh, use a piece of acetate um, or plaw plate, something like that, just as a, a stable base. You know, you can cut it any size you want, whether it be a square, circle, uh, something like that, for your um, for your piece to sit on, so that it doesn't uh, wobble around. Like if you do it on there, you can see with that. So you're going to get some some divots in there. Um, and that's a, just a personal suggestion of mine uh, to you guys. And make sure if you do do that, not to, um, don't cover a big chunk of the surface area. Because that's going to, one, cut down the airflow. And two, it's going to put um, strain on the fan itself. So we've got that in. I'll replace the rest of the screws here in a little bit. So I'm actually going to take and flip up like so, so that you guys can see the bottom. And you can see uh, the screws for the placing of the barriers that are inside. And then the back wall. Um, it's got three rubber feet on the bottom of it. Um, testing it out, it actually had low vibration which was very nice and you've got the fan back here and like I said it, it is a good size fan um, and I will kick it on with actually I'll kick it on the other way so I'm actually gonna kick it on so you can hear it
Now, it is, it's not that loud, not to me, compared to uh, my other one. Uh, it is a little bit louder because it's pushing up uh, against the wall, it's reverberating back, um, things like that, but it's actually not that bad. Um, I can hear perfectly fine, especially if I have my music playing and everything, but like I said, it's going to be a lot louder to you guys because um, the, the mic is picking it up. Um, but, well, you see, that actually has very, uh, very good suction power to it. And I'm actually going to do another demonstration here in a second. So, yet again, we will be back. Um, I know this is a long video, but uh, I think it kind of deserves it. So, hold on one second, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm back, and uh, my demonstration is let's see if we can actually catch up you can actually see I am probably a good almost two feet away from it um, this is just the incense stick and you can actually see all the way from here it's being drawn um, to the booth so anything that's drifting up and around it's actually being sucked to it um, and I turned down some lights so that you could actually see this the smoke and the suction effect. So this is probably I want to say about six inches high off the thing and you can see it's being uh, forcefully sucked down um, but you know my concern with painting was uh, you know overspray going straight down and it actually doesn't. It actually goes down and to the back uh, which is great so if you're spraying from here you don't have to worry about that and that was one of my curiosities on on how this ended up working was you know did it blow it straight you know suck it straight down and uh, what are the effects and if you're painting a figure or something that's all together and you have over, you're painting the top what's to keep the overspray from hitting the feet so we're going to test that later on uh, that's another video but I thought I'd show you and you get even suction, one of the things you get pretty much even suction, uh, I think it's darker over here, um, all the way around. Now this, it, it kind of sucks to the middle, but it still sucks to the back and the middle in there. Um, but so far I am, I am extremely impressed. Um, even up a good 12 inches, 12 inches or more off of it, it's getting good suction down. Um, and that's what that's what you really want when you're when you're painting um, especially you know you don't want overspray going everywhere you don't want fumes going everywhere and you don't want your wife trying to kick you in the head because you're making a mess um, and with all the filters even if you have it like I, I'm keeping it right now um, you know you won't get uh, a color spray on the back of the wall from leftover you know paint residue that didn't get caught in the filters. Um, I've done that with uh, my other, uh, my other one. So, and actually, this is strong enough. It's actually, tr you know, even holding it there, it's it's sucking, trying to suck the ash off into there. So we will uh, we'll remove that. So anyway, guys, um, you know, I would uh, let you know, uh, show you. Uh, stay tuned you know I'm going to be doing more stuff uh, you know what I can do with acrylics on it uh, I do use acrylics on my figures um, I might uh, with permission modify it to do uh, hook up a hose to be able to vent it outside and use it for um, my Playmo color or my Mr. Hobby color but other than that you know, stop by, say hi to Scott over at CakeSafe.com, check out their site, uh, check out some of their other things. Uh, another thing I'm actually uh, ordering some of is they have uh, uh, cake turners or uh, cake plates that rotate and they make them in different sizes. And uh, they look really well made and so I'm actually picking up a couple of those uh, next month. So I'll let you guys see those. Um, they'll come in real handy. and. Um, you know, the smaller ones actually look like they'd work really well uh, using on here for when you're painting. That way you can rotate it. Uh, you can rotate your piece as you're cutting it. You don't uh, have to be holding it all the time. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. 
leave comments uh, and likes below um, to let them know that uh, one, you're watching it and uh, you're interested in their product. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great one. Thank you.